when we work your arm lock and drills, we're going to break it down for you. We're going to work the four locks, four breaks on the arm first. The four breaks on the arm first, and then we'll move on to the uh, joint locks. Let's. Okay, everybody ready? Four breaks off of the five basic points of attack. Since the Jays work with uh, counters at the end, everybody ready? And person against the wall is attacking. Go! trying to teach you with the four basic breaks. With the four basic breaks, before Sensor Barry leaves, I want to use Sensor Barry before he leaves and work with him. Okay? Man is striking. Here, once again, off the five basic, off the five basic uh, chokes. I mean, off, off the five basic strikes. We always stay with the same format. It makes it easy for us to learn. So we don't say, what are we working off of now? We're always working off the five strikes. Keep it simple. The man strikes, change the focus. This is called pinky to forearm, circular motion down. This is called a floating hand. Anytime somebody punches you in a street fight and it punches you and you're blocking, there's another hand that's floating. These hands are floating. You have to learn how to control those floating hands. If you can control these floating hands, you got a very good chance of winning that battle. Now, when that man strike, we shocked. We did pinky to forearm, circular motion in, controlling the floating hand, dipped our body over, broke here, Right here, extend. With our muscle, into his elbow. As we did that, we slid underneath. Now, locking it in, our shoulder locks in his elbow. Put our chin to our chest. Don't lift, because you relieve the pain. Lock it in. Look at his face. He's not making believe. He feels this. Put our chin to our chest and slide it over. And lock again. That's our third break. Now, we elbow to the face. Here, elbow to the ribs, turn tight around, and come back up and break. Right here. Again, snap. This is what we do with our core four base break. Number two, strike. Once again, blocking and shocking. Touching, blocking. Changing the focus, slipping underneath. Lock, pull. See, we gotta adjust. Once he's out here, adjust. Pull him into you. Lock. Break one, chin to your chest. Break two, he can't hit me, he can't touch me. He raised that hand and do anything else but slap. On his own side, I'll break it. Elbow to the face, elbow to the ribs, turn around, and we're locking back in again for our break. Third strike. Once again, we move into V-stepping. Watch how important this is. The man moves, boom, here. Look at his hand. I pull the hand in. You see when I pull the hand in how tight I get? I bend. I scoop in. Break again. See? Break again. Break. Slide. My second break. He's trying to resist this. And I called him out for a reason. Because Barry's one of the tightest guys in here. Okay? Chin to the chest. Break again. Elbow to the face. Elbow to the ribs. And we lock again. I'll break. See, I want to 
show you this with no loose pussy. I want to show it to you with a tight pussy so you understand how effective it is. And you understand that they feel the pain. Okay? Not no guy who's just, oh, I better slap it because Sensei's on video. No. You slap it because you feel the pain. Number four strike. Here, we're moving to number four. He's shot to the groin. Why? Why we got a shot? Focus. Take his focus off something. Now he's all, ooh. When you said here, bang. Oh, now look, quick. See? Underneath. We got the one. We got two. We got three. Elbow to the face. Elbow to the rim. Stay tight and break. And you want to know the beauty of this? Anytime I want, I go right back into the chest. That's why we do what we do. Because everything thus far, we showed you, connects to each other. It's like a jigsaw puzzle that fit right in place. It don't, it's not separate. It's together. But we teach it separate, and then you put it together, you've got a lot of technique. Okay? And number five, man motioning, shocking, simple. Turn the hand in, turn the body in. Once again, break one, break two. Look at my body. I bet. Straighten myself up. Why? I see too many people doing this. Stay bent. And they do this. You're making it comfortable for him. But this is the guy who tried to hurt you. Forget him. Let him go through changes. Stand up there. Stay strong. Stay strong. And pull the hand up. Chin to the chest. Arm bar. Elbow to the face. Elbow to the rib. Turn over. Break again. First. And that is our four breaks, what we call four arm breaks. Now we put them into four breaks into the locks. Okay, now we're going back into the arm lock and drill. You remember when you seen the guys that were working the arm lock and drill? They were working to break the arm. As I came in, I showed break the arm, slide it in, break it from the shoulder, slide over to the chin to your chest, lock, break it on your other shoulder, turn around, break, break again, and then you finish off there. Well, that's not our ending. Like I showed you before, like I was telling you before, you can lead that into chokes, you can lead that into many different things. Well, in jiu-jitsu, you got what's called joint locks. We got wrist locks and joint locks. Now, we have a drill in which we put all our joint locks together. Now, when we teach it to our students, we break it down. We'll show you the locks broken down, and I'll show you them put together. So you understand the difference on how it's taught and where to put it in and what it's for. Says so it West, please. Okay. We have what's called, and this is about the boringest thing that we do in our system, is breaking down these locks individually, like this. But when you see it put together, that's V Jitsu. Because it's combination locking. Professor V was the only one to start this combination shocking and combination locking. Okay? When the lock, we have, as you know, and many different systems of Jiu Jitsu, all the system of Jiu Jitsu use, which is called a pigeon lock. Your pigeon lock. You come in, you step in, pull in the man's hand, you can catch it from pinky to forearm. Right now, how you get it doesn't really matter. Okay? It's not the most important part. The lock is the most important part. How you get there, there's a lot of different ways to get there, but I'll tell you one thing, whichever way you get there, I'll tell you you're going to have to fight for it. Because no one is going to say, here, take my arm and break it up. No one's going to give it to you. You got to earn the right to get each lock, each hole, each break. So we're just going to take it off of pinky to forearm grab. You come up as you press the elbow up, we bend in. And one thing I want to say about this, which is very important, a lot of people, and I watch it all over, try to break an arm like this. You can't break an arm like this because when you give it the shot with the impact, your arm is also going to receive impact. And as your arm receives impact, it's going to bend. It's going to bend. And what's going to happen is you, take, you are taking the shock off of his elbow because your elbow your joint is bending. You never break with palm up. You always break with palm down. Now, it becomes a stiff, like a stiff board. Because your arm is not, actually, your, your palm is down, it's not going to fold up back this way. It bends this way, it don't bend this way. So it's stiff. So when you break, when you come in to do your breaks, it's always palm down. Never palm up. Okay? So you come into your break, break, and now you bend it to get the joint to bend, and you use your circular motion movement on the wrist. You roll it around your wrist, catching the base of the hand and squeezing it in. This is called a pigeonhole. If you can get 
a close up on this part with the thumbs, with the hand, please. Very important. When you come in here and squeeze, watch the hand. If you put your thumbs in between with a wrist bend, you are saving the man from the ultimate pain that he can get out of this technique. Don't jam your thumbs in there. Don't jam your thumbs in there. It hurts. But I tell you what, if you take your thumbs out and use the palms of your hands, it'll hurt even more. So don't put your thumbs in there. Take your thumbs out. Another thing is never do a pigeon in the center of your chest. Because what's going to happen if you do it on your chest bone, your chest is solid. It don't collapse. When you do it on your chest, his hand is going to slide. You're going to catch you in your chin. And I would try to do that to you. And anybody would try to do that to you because no one's going to let you hurt them. So the second you do this and you squeeze, he's going to come up and he's going to clock you under your jaw. You're going to want to bite in your tongue. When you do this, either you do it one of two ways for safety. Put it in your stomach because your stomach can suck in. That's provided you don't have a big belly. Your stomach can suck in and you lean over. You lean over. Now he can't, he can't come out. He can't come out to make it hurt you. And you don't put yourself in danger. When you're doing it like this. See, you suck your stomach in. You don't push your belly out. You suck your stomach right. in. And hold the lock. He ain't going nowhere. Touch my head. Yes, he can't. Yes, he can't. Yes. Once you got the pigeon on, it's on. Understand that about jujitsu. Once you got the lock on, it is on. Either you got it or you don't got it. If the man can hit you, hurt you, touch you, punch you with a jujitsu lock on, you don't have the jujitsu lock on. Once any jujitsu lock is on, it is on. Man can't touch you. The trick is to get there. That's the trick. That's the trick, to get there. It's nothing magic about it. You got to earn the right to get there. So once again, stand throw strike, pinky to forearm, grab 10 fingers. Not one after you change the focus. 10 fingers, 10 finger grab. Step in, break. Palm down, always causing pain. Yeah, we can shock him, we can hit him in the groin, we can do a lot of stuff. We're not worried about that right now. All we're worried about right now is the pigeon lock. Bend the arm, rotate, let your hand rotate inside the man's hand, adjust, put it in your belly, or tuck it on your side of your arm. Yes, sir. And squeeze. And do yourself a favor. Do not do this when you do the pigeon lock. Don't look up. So the man can try to poke you, grab you, grab your heel, slap you. Just tilt your head and look down. Look down. Why I'm saying this to look down? If in the event, let's say he grabbed me, I got a lot of hair, he grabbed me here. If I go like this to pull away, I'm going to lose this pigeon lock. But if he grabs my hair, the only way he can effectively pull my hair is down. Down. So when he pulls my hair down, I go down. I go down. This with him and with the lock. Fuck. And I keep my pigeon lock. I keep my pigeon lock. That's very important. Next thing from the pigeon lock that we use very effectively is the four finger lock. The four finger lock. How do you get a finger lock? I had an instructor tell me of many, many years. Of many, many years. This instructor is in his 70s. And I was surprised. I was very surprised to hear him tell me, he goes, finger locks are a bunch of nonsense. Finger locks don't work. Because you grab a guy's fingers, he goes, it's a lot of baloney. The guy just punch you in your face. What is the guy going to do? Just stand there and let you pull his fingers? Absolutely right. He's 100% accurate. 100% accurate. But there's only one thing about it. He's right. No one is going to just let you grab him and let you stand there and pull their finger. They're going to push you away. They're going to punch you in your face. They're going to do a lot of stuff. But I'm going to tell you one thing. Professor Wally J has made his career out of teaching small circle jiu-jitsu, which consists of a lot of finger locks. Professor Wally J makes it look easy. He makes it look easy. He can do it to the point that it's, for him, second nature. It's a lot of practice went into what he does. He can make it look easy. 
Maybe one or two of his students can make it look easy. There's nothing easy about finger locks. There's nothing easy about wrist locks. There's nothing easy about throwing. There's nothing easy about punching or kicking. Either you're going to practice it or you're not. Either you're going to be proficient in it or you're not. There's no in-between. Practice, practice, practice. But I can tell you one thing about finger locks. If you get an opportunity to put one on, and you know how to put one on, the man who is going on, the man who is feeling that finger lock, is going down. He is going down. I don't care if he weighs 300 pounds and he's six foot five. He's going down. He's dropping down like a little kid because you have no idea what type of pain this is. This is a special kind of pain. I've been doing jujitsu a long time. And when somebody slaps some finger locks on you, it is a special kind of pain. It'll make a grown man cry tears in his eyes and drop you to the knees faster than any kick to the groin could ever do it. When you get it on, it's on. You have to respect what finger locks can do. They are a very, very, very important part of self-defense because why? It is so far and so much overlooked that we look towards the more physical stuff, the more stuff that we got to hit and pull and kick and bite and, and really work hard to do with stuff like this that's in front of our face that you say, nah, this don't work. It's, not it's too easy to work. But drop a man right down. And when you combine the wrist locks into finger locks, you know, now you're talking a whole different atmosphere, a whole different world. Now you're completely on another level. And I have never seen nobody do this but the Grandmaster, but Master V. And I'm giving him credit all through these videos because I want people to know, I want people to understand that this is not stuff that I just made up once or twice, came up with overnight. This is stuff that this man has been trying to teach people for years. People, man has been trying to come out with this for years to the martial arts world, and a lot of people didn't want to hear it and didn't want to accept it. But they're going to accept it if they like it or not. Why? Because the way I'm breaking it down, either it makes sense to you or it don't make sense to you. Okay? And you can't deny when you see it that, and you try it and it makes sense. And if you really still don't understand and you really still don't think it makes sense and you still don't have no merit, please come on down to the school. Get in contact with us. Our address will be on this video. You get in contact with us and you're always welcome coming down here. And I'll show you. I will show you why it works and how it works. Because... I'm not coming out here playing games. Either it makes sense or it don't make sense because you don't have time to waste it, neither do I. Coming off a strike. Once again, we're just taking it from the changing the focus. It could be this, it could be this, it could be shocking. The bottom line is when I get the hand, controlling the, 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 the floating hand like I explained before. When I get the hand, I'm going into now my finger lock. Where am I going to get it? How am I going to get it? Okay, watch. Before we came off of this, we went into break, we went into pigeon. Okay, now we're coming off of our break, and we're going into our finger lock. What will happen when you do this to a person? When you break a man's arm across your shoulder, you think his fist is going to be closed? The last thing on his mind is keeping a tight fist. When you do this, that hand is open. That hand is open. Right? Now we're taking it from here. That hand is open. You've seen how I got there. You take it from here. You understand that this finger lock will give you what you need. When I come in here and I do this, yeah. the body lifts, the body rises. Plain and simple. So we're coming from here. You're coming from your pinky to forearm. Grab it. Pinky to forearm. Grab it right into your hand. Hold the wrist. And bend back. Yes. Look at that thumb sticking right out. I'll bite yes. the thumb right off. Get a close-up of this, please. Yes. Watch this. Yes. If my hand slides up in here and catch that thumb yes. and lock that thumb joint, man is going down. He is going down. Going down faster than you can ever think a man can go down. And when I bring him back up, the same way I brought him down, with the, with the fingers I brought him down, my palm now controls into the base of his fingers. We'll bring it right back up. Right back up again. Right back up. So that's your finger motion. Pinky to forearm, like you're shaking hands. Turn the wrist, push down on the fingers. Push down on the fingers, using this as a base. Create a base. Yes. Professor Wally J always says, create a base. Yes, sir. Don't do this. Because if you do this, the guy's going to just slap your hand and pull your hand back. He'll slap it right down. Take it away from you. You have to secure it with this C cup around the wrist. Now, when he's trying to pull back, yeah. you lift forward. Sir. You lift up right there. 
You got what you want. That thumb is standing right there for you to bite or for you to lock. It's come back up. Finger lock. Now, the reason why I'm breaking it down, I'm going to show you all of these locks in one. So I'm taking my time to teach you to understand. Grab the wrist, like you're shaking hands, turn the hand, push back, hold the wrist. If the man bends his arm, watch this from this side. If the man pulls back, which is a motion that everybody should do, you don't pull the fingers and pull the wrist and try to pull it back. Let him do what he's naturally going to do. As he pulls yeah. back, you just secure the back of the head. Yes. Ah. The pain intensifies even more. The worst thing this man could ever do, so, could ever do, is pull back. He's better off letting me do this than him pulling back. Yes. Ah. And letting me do this. This. This is no joke. This is crazy pain. Crazy pain. And anybody who tell me that they can punch me in my face this. when I got this lock on. 25 Park Place, come on down on the second floor, and you come and show me in New York, okay? Sir. Sir. So we come in here, let me use this, let me use Sensei Wislow, because Sensei West is kind of jacked up now, <laughs> Okay, we covered the pigeon, right, switch sides. We covered the pigeon lock, right, which is break, turn it, wrist, lock it. From pigeon, we're going into fingers. Now with the fingers, like I said, we went to the finger lock. You have this finger two ways. You have it up, palm up, and you have it palm down. But now when you palm down, I don't understand. What can they do? What can I get with palm down? You have to understand, no matter where this individual is, you have to make it work for you. What if you're here, and what if the palm is down, and what if your hand came across here? What if this guy tried to grab you, and you pushed his hand off, and you did this? What can I get from here? This is what we're going to show you. Fingers. Take your right hand, put it on top of his hand, like this. Now you're going to turn until the man's palm is facing towards you. Once the man's palm is facing towards you, you lift. See how his body rise? That's all you need to do. When it's here, you lift. And that'll give you this whole angle, this whole part of the man's body to strike. I don't care who you are, you will motion. If I do this with one finger, your body motions. If I do this with four fingers, your body motion. Now a distance allow me to strike, allow me to strike, allow me to strike. There's no defense for you. There's no counter, just pain. When you lap the slap it in here, you turn it and you move it up, the pain come, you shock the man. Now. I put it in a position, I could go to armbar. Armbar. Right there. I just flowed into that. Okay? But how you get, how you learn your hand locks, like your shaking hand. Like I said, one way brings you palm up. Don't do this. You must hold the wrist. Palm up. If he bends his hand, come behind. The other way is when you turn it over. This way. Now, you see, when you turn it over this way and you're holding it with your right hand, Either you got to come up with your left hand now to bring him down, or once again, palm up to bring him up. All depends which way you want to go with the man. Now, here, you want to grab his wrist with your hand and turn your hand. Take a close up of this, please. Very important. Watch my hand. I go from a shaking hand position to over. My hand rolls to where my fingers now, my base of my palm are on top of all four of his fingers. Now, I turn it in, and that will give me this finger lock and this arm break. I do it fast, you'll never notice it in a technique, so I'm breaking it down for you. So please bear with me with this, okay? Because I don't want to run through it. Palm up, grab the wrist, rotate, turn up, palm down. That's what I'm talking about in how to flow and how to position a man. The next thing we have is armbar. I learned a very simple way of how to do armbar and how to teach armbar, okay? Armbar is very important. It works. There's so many positions and so many places you come into armbar, it's ridiculous that you can use an armbar. But a lot of people, you get so caught up in fighting, you get blown away. You don't even notice it. Armbar. I want to show you the easiest way to learn and to teach armbar. And when I say learn it, the person who is teaching, the person who's doing the technique, 
You should be learning. You should be learning. I'm not teaching this. I'm learning this as I'm teaching it over and over and over again. You keep an open mind. You're trying to find a better, a more simpler way, a more effective way, a more productive way to give it back to your people all the time. Not this is the way it's done. Carve it in stone and that's it. That kind of mentality have caused people, a lot of people, millions and millions and millions of dollars in this world because they were so close-minded. They figure I had the magic potion and now I'm not going to change and that's it. And that's it. And they lost out. Armbar. You stay even with the man. Even with your partner. Watch my footwork, please. Can you just get down and get it, get an angle forward? Watch my footwork. One, two. You notice I came toe-to-toe, -to -toe, brought it back, and I'm over. That's all it is. That is real simple. So when you're, when you're teaching armbar, when you're learning it, at the same time for yourself, one, two, three. That's it. Simple. Watch now. I step out. I grab my man's wrist. After I grab the man's wrist, my hand is inverted. My hand is turned in, inwards. My hand is turned inwards. I don't grab it like this with my thumb on the outside. My thumb is on the inside. Thumb is on the inside. That's one. Two. Ten finger grab. I pull it dead center to my body. Two. I turn, I rotate, so the elbow now is facing towards the ceiling, palm facing towards the ceiling, and I take my third step in. Three. Now I have armbar. Turn it around so we can see it again. One. I step in. Two. The most important part, ten finger grab. Not this stuff, this macho stuff. Ten finger grab. You are fighting for your life. Ten finger grab. Because when he pulls his arm back, my legs are going to start to work. I'm going to start to kick him. I'm going to start to break him down. We did the, the triangular stepping. Break him down. Ten finger grab. Now he's here. Rotate. Scat the rotation. As you start the rotation, watch my elbow lift. I step in and I'm over. Now here, I put my arm in and I squeeze. Squeeze. Bring in the man's face to my knee. Face to my knee, not this. When I bring him down, his face comes into my knee. Now from this method here, I've learned this. I picked this up, I picked this up from Shinan, Antonio Pereira in the Tremont system. They do it this way, it's easy, simple, most effective way on how to do this, as I've seen. There's a lot, of more, lot more difficult ways, but this way is simple. If you can't understand it this way, you can't understand it. Then, as the man may try to go for your leg or touch your leg, you push out, you move your leg, give the man room to sweep, and you pull him to the side. Up. Real simple. Real effective. One, two, three, and squeeze. Slide the palm down, move your leg across, and put it in a joint. Real simple. Real simple. That's your armbar. Now you have armbar where the man don't go all the way down. Where you just now stop it. When the man come one, two, and here. You never take the man to the ground. You never take him all the way down. Why is this important? Because not all the time you will take the person to the ground. Here is where we go back into what we call Vigiso, which is flowing from one lot to another lot to another lot. And I'll show you what I mean later on coming up into this series next movement is c lock c lock a lot of people use c lock c lock it is what it is because it's called c lock because of the shape of the person's arm when they're in it most important thing about c lock once again you grab the hand 10 finger grab circular motion you squeeze it across the knuckles of your opponent do not block off his wrist. Now from here, center with your body. And watch my knuckles. My knuckles and thumb and finger point towards the man. I crank down. Selah brings the man right to his knees. Right to his knees. The way I teach Selah 
And the way I'm teaching you to do silat is to do it with a flow. Don't just grab the man's hand and put silak on. Flow into silak. Flow into silak. So you understand that it's circular motion round, circular motion back, and down. That is so simple. Circular motion, palm, elbow coming in. As you step, you grab the hand. Show that from a different angle so you can see what I'm doing. Here, I'm guarding, palm, elbow, circular motion. I grab the hand. See, I had it with this hand, now I switch with this hand. As I turn back around to face him, I bend the wrist, I bend the wrist, I grab with the second hand for the solid 10 fingers, I got the C here, and I lean. Slightly, the man is right there. This, you could twist and then turn a little more. I met a lot of different people, people do this a lot of ways. Sometimes a guy got very strong wrist. Sometimes a guy may, just may not, he may force and try to hold this. I had one time a bodybuilder tell me, try it on me, it can't work, and I don't feel nothing. He put all his focus and energy into this C-lock. And while I was trying to crank this C-lock on, he had his focus on, and I, he didn't feel it. He tried to focus in as much as he could. He didn't feel a thing. Then I said, okay. I was left with two things, two choices. Let this individual walk away thinking that jujitsu don't work and it's a lot of crap, or put it on like I know to put it on. And that means I gotta hurt you, okay? Don't play with jujitsu. Don't be a non-believer. A lot of people are non-believers, think this stuff don't work. And what happens is most people who are trying to teach and show people, if you come from the perspective of, yo, I'm a non-believer, you gotta show me all the time, it's okay. If you're that type of person that you really, 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 truly want to feel the actual pain of these locks, be prepared to get hurt. And when the person hurts you, understand is that they didn't do it. You made them do it. You made them hurt you because they tried to break it down to you and it wasn't enough, so they hurt you. So what I did to this gentleman was when I had this lock on and he had all his focus and all his energy on trying to stop me from doing this thing, I kicked him in his kneecap. I blasted out his knee. And when I blasted out his kneecap, he was no longer able to focus all his energy into his hand. And then I put the lock on. And then he went down. And then we wanted to fight. But that's what I'm talking about. That's what happens. It's no joke. One thing about these locks, you counter, counter, counter. Sure, you can counter it if you know what's coming. If you know what's coming. And if the person puts it on, plays games with you. But if a person who's serious, you ain't countering nothing. You ain't countering nothing. This lock is on the money. All these locks are on the money. And any time someone tries to put it, look, mash him in his groin. I use the kneecap because it's the quickest and it's the closest distance. I use the shin. I kick him in his groin. You hold his hair, I mash you in your groin, and I put the C lock on. You tell me what you're going to stop. Does it make sense? It makes sense. You're not blocking nothing. You're not stopping me from doing nothing. I ran you to your groin. Whatever's in your mind went out the door. Went right out the window. Whatever you had in your mind to do. Understand that about locks. That's what Professor V called shocking. All the time, shocking. Now, I want to put all the locks on together so you can see. And we work back and forth so you understand how to go from the pigeon lock over to the arm bar, over to the shoulder bar, down to the C-lock. From the C-lock, you're putting the man into your next movement where you're coming in from your finger lock. From your finger lock down, you're bringing him up into your sankyo lock. Now your sankyo lock, the easiest way to do sankyo lock and teach sankyo lock without no big deal and no big hassle. Shake hands. Shake hands with the man. Grab his wrist with your opposite hand. Look at his hand or look at your hand like you're checking out the time. Because if you have a watch on your left hand, you look at the time. As you look at the time, you press backwards and you look, keep it lifted, look at the time on your watch, and you're in the Sankyo lock. You're in the Sankyo lock, plain and simple. Now, a lot of people do this a lot of ways. A lot of people do this when they do Sankyo lock. They bend their hand up. A lot of people, when they do Sankyo lock, they turn more, pull more, and they do this. Keep the elbow lower, okay? I'm not saying the way we do it is perfect or the way we do it is the way to do it. 
But I tell you one thing that I learned, cause pain. If it don't cause pain, it don't matter which way you do it. Cause as much pain as you possibly can. One thing I tell you about the sound kill lot, I always put myself in a position where I could do more. When we do the sound kill lot, most important thing is you remember motion causes motion. Motion causes motion. What do you think is going to happen when you grab a man's hand? He's going to pull his hand away. When he pull his hand away, switch sides. When he pull his hand away, watch the motion. You see what that does to my body? If I have a 10-finger grip, it brings my body forward. It brings my body forward if I have a good grip. If I don't have a good grip and he pulls his hand away, now we're here again with nothing. That's why you got to have 10 fingers on the hand. So when you grab a man's hand and he pull, you move in, you got your sunk, your lock on. Now when we do it, the way we do it over here in the Vigisso School, we teach you. Keep the elbow up. Keep the elbow up. You don't have to bend the hands up. Keep the elbows up. Turn the hand more. Keep it cranked. Okay? Keep it torque. Put more torque on it. And don't look at the hand and don't go, do you feel it? Because you're going to get cracked in your face. You don't ask him, do he feel it? You have nothing to say to this individual. Learn to understand how your techniques work and what make your techniques work. Look at his feet. If I do it this way, if I do it this way, if I do it this way, all of that don't make a difference. Look at his feet. If his feet don't lift, if he don't do this, you don't got the lock on, buddy. I don't care which way you do it. His feet have to do this. He has to get up on his toes. He has to get up on his toes. Understand that. When I crank, the man goes on his toes. No doubt about it. You get some guys who got loose wrists, no problem. When you do that, you see the pinky there hanging on the end? All people's pinkies hang on the end unless they're special, okay? The hand is someplace else. You grab that pinky and you pull it back while you're doing the lock. You see what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about, the technique within the technique, to cause pain. Pull that pinky back. Oh, look at that. Oh, us, us, us. He feeling it now. Finger locks don't work. Hey, that's a finger lock. With a wrist lock. Think about that. How many times or how many years other people been teaching this lock and they never even figured it out, guys? Pull the finger back. Why? Because it's too busy doing what somebody else showed us and not thinking and not using our heads to try to understand everything changes. And you people who disagree with that concept of everything changes and you say, no, 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 it's not tradition. What kind of car you drive? What kind of car you drive? What kind of telephone you got in your house? Do you own a microwave oven? All those things have changed. I'm quite sure you're not getting in front of your Honda, and if you're driving a Honda, then I know you understand what I'm talking about, okay? Cranking in the front. There is no cranking in the front. You understand? Forget that. That day has passed. Ain't no brick ovens no more, okay? It's microwaving. That's what I'm talking about. Times have changed. You got a cellular phone, you got a touch telephone, times have changed. And if you can accept all those things that those people brought forth to us because there was a need for those things to brought forth to us, then you can understand this. The, I seen the same need that those people seen they had the same need for, and Professor V seen the same need for. It is time for the way self-defense and martial arts was taught, it is time for it to change. And you may say once again, who the hell am I? And I say to you, who the hell were those people? Who the hell were they to change my car that I used to like to get out of in 1934 and crank up into a fuel injection where I just have to now turn the key? Okay? Who the hell are they? Who the hell am I? That's who I am. There's a need. We're trying to fold the need. And you can go with the flow today, now, or you can pick it up later, but you will pick it up sooner or later. Plain and simple. Understand this lock. Put the finger in. If you can get a close-up of that, you grab the fingers with your three fingers as you're putting the sonkyo lock on, pull the finger back up, it makes the sonkyo lock stronger. It makes the sonkyo lock stronger. Okay? Show it from the other side one more time. 